What's up guys, this is the Brotherman and I am back to bring you, well, I am here to bring you the first episode of my Denmark campaign. So the straw poll has this time fallen down very conclusively in Denmark at the point of recording it's about 40 votes and then the next to mine is 33, so it's quite a big, quite a big margin. So we are playing as the, uh, as the nation of Denmark. So this is going to be a long campaign. But, I, but when I say long campaign, so what, let me explain that for a minute. So we're going to be playing world domination victory conditions, but it's going to be, to be until we meet the victory condition of 40 regions. I personally like to think of world domination as being actually owning all the continents. So that's why we're playing with the world domination victory conditions, but we're going to be playing as, we're going to be playing a long campaign. So if we hit 40 regions, we, we're done. Um, long campaign is quite small, it's only 25 and they're quite boring regions, they're all, you know, Baltic, Europe kind of areas, so I figured if I did long, uh, world domination, we're obviously going to be fighting in Europe, that's going to be, um, that's going to be inevitable, but what this allows us to do is allows us to, to explore setting up Danish colonies and raiding like the Vikings. So it's three regions, hard, hard. Got some good stuff up here. If you guys want to read it, I will. Good God, that's a lot of stuff. I ex didn't expect to see all of that. Um, I'm sure, it's a lot of good history though. But let's crack on. Um, this will be coming hot off the presses because via text on my YouTube channel that my computer was broken. Um, it's a whole. It's, it's a frustratingly little issue that ended up taking a few days to get resolved because I've missed a certain key thing, or I didn't have a certain key thing. Um, but anyway, here we are as Denmark, and as we all know and will expect, we will immediately be at war with Sweden. So we need to prepare for that and be quite aggressive. Because one thing that does happen also is that Britain declares on us as well, usually. Um, so what we have to do is we have to go on a war footing fairly quickly. So first task is to get plug bayonets, and then rather than going straight down the tree go towards canister shot to get that very early military advantage. We're going to want to build our barracks because we're going to want our line infantry. We're going to send our gentlemen to our university to speed up research. So diplomacy, let's get some trade agreements. So usually Britain declares on me, but I like to try and have trade, see if we can slightly wade. If we can tip the scales of Britain being positive in our favour, that would be good. So let's keep Britain as a, as a good trade partner. Other good trade partners. So I'm looking at some of the minor ones, but none of them jump out really. Um, the Ottomans will be good because we're so far away. We're probably not going to be fighting against them for a long time. We can trade with Sweden, but that's not going to hold. I think that's going to be it. So in terms of how we spend our money, by the farm because it's a cheap upgrade. Same with the logging camp. And buy a mine up here. It's low yield, but mines are pretty good at earning cash. But one thing I'm going to want to do is upgrade you to a military barracks. Conscripts aren't great, but we're going to need to start building or we'll start recruiting armies more so than worrying about our economy or infrastructure for that matter. Um, so what have we got? Militia, pikemen. Let's get a unit of conscripts. So up here, it's worth upgrading because if Britain, well, if what usually happens is Sweden likes to push up a small army to attack Norway, so it's worth holding on to it. And the idea is that an army, the army you create in Copenhagen, and the army that's up around Norway will join. And this is going to be a bit of a mess, I think, for a, for a while until we're established. But I think that seems like a good start. So let's hit and turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, immediately. So let's call our allies in to help. Bring in Russia. Poland's chickened out. So there immediately is a is cause for concern because Britain is sending troops. Um, if they sail for Norway, well, to be honest, I'll have to look at the Norway garrison. Um, 
to be honest, it always it usually feels because I've played this a couple of times. Yeah, but here comes Sweden. Let's bring in the Russians. It usually feels like what the AI does is they want to aim for um, whichever of your provinces is weakest. So I've had Britain want to sail and take Iceland, which was very, very good because I don't care about Iceland at all. It's not a very wealthy region. And it's not certainly not advantageous for me to spend money on at this point. I think we're much better off either buying troops or upgrading our ability to be get better units. Once we've secured Scandinavia, we'll be in quite a good position to then be able to pick and choose. And at that point, because I'd be feeling more confident, I'd like to push um, some expeditions out into the Americas to try and gain some Danish colonies to get some more trade resources. So we do have a new gentleman, but unfortunately because of the presence of this ship I believe it will prevent us from crossing over this pass Denmark has a new port so I'll upgrade this to another trade port just to open up more avenues for trade I might actually spend it's two turns until two turns until the barracks are built so I might spend my time building a set of demi cannons because then they'll be finished at the time the Barracks is finished. You're still recruiting. So let's see if we can open up trade with someone closer. Prussia would be good, but can't get pressure. What about India? Good. If that won't help, it's all going to the same port. Um, it's something we kind of need to do. Pull that turn. And hopefully the French don't try. Uh, but yes, there's usually a bit of... No. If they're not going to give me money, I'm not interested in an alliance. Because you've already seen that their words are wind. So I expect a bit of, bit of raiding from the Swedes. But the main objective is to build up a smaller army in Copenhagen. And then send that army eastwards to attack Copenhagen because so once you take Copenhagen they're pretty knackered Copenhagen's quite a valuable not Copenhagen Stockholm uh, Stockholm's quite a valuable little region because it's got lots of towns lots of potential um, and it's a fairly easy task to hop on and hit hit Finland um, I'm not so sure I'd take St Petersburg because I wouldn't I'm okay with letting the Russians have that so right now this gentleman's a bit at a loose end but I'll send instead I'll send him to here to either research and steal, either to research and scout out uh, the town for us. So we've got one or more turn till this is done. You're still going. Oh, and this is one thing that Denmark has going for it. Um, so for some reason they have quite large units of regiment of horse. That's a particular quirk that Denmark has, I believe. Um, let's buy some infrastructure. Because we're not town towns aren't growing, and we need to as we're going to be. Oh, I for, uh, always forget this ministers. So plus one management. So standard. This guy's got plus two management, and plus one happiness. This guy's see he's good for the rev he's good for the treasury. But if I swap these guys. I'll gain more bonuses for tax income and he's not as good like he is specifically good for the treasury but it's only seven turns to the next election so I'm kind of inclined just to kind of leave him yep so we're not doing any trade except with Hanover by road but there's not much we can do except for hold on except to hold on Okay, so here comes the Brits attacking Iceland. What I thought I would have hoped it would have taken them a couple of more turns to get there. But it also means that John Churchill is distracted. And the hope is that that means that the AI's little screw over the player box has been ticked. So what Britain declaring on us uh, gives us is it gives us the opportunity to invade Britain. And then that will kick all their colonies out to be independent. 
it could create the the, uh, the birth of the United States, which would be quite interesting. That's why I'd be quite content to kind of... Okay, so here comes the Swedish army. And it looks like they're going to go attack Norway. So I'm probably going to call back my forces from the forces from the fort back to Norway because then Norway with its garrison forces should be enough to defeat the Swedes so once we defeated that army uh, we can join forces and go hit Stockholm yep so we've lost Iceland which is fine West European mercenaries yes we have a handful of not great infantry But at least if I do this, it will mean I've got these units, my pikes, and then three units of garrison troops. If they decide to hold up, hold up in the fort, that's fine. So we have plug bayonets. So let's go straight on to canister shot. I've got a trade port, but it doesn't look like we're going to be that's opened up any trade positions. Or has it? It has actually. So let's get trade with Venice would be good. Okay, when in doubt, go for Persia. That's what I've always found. Persia usually seems to be pretty solid. Uh, no, I'm not doing any trade regions, any trading of regions. Let's do Louisiana. Let's do New Spain. Let's do the colonies. Yeah, that's Frankish Spanish colonies. Okay, so we can recruit line infantry. So let's get some good good numbers of that. Yes, they do. They have, they have a garrison. They've got some forces, but they've not got a huge... Oh, they've got... They've already got canister shot. That's something worth knowing. Try steal it. Okay, so you've got some minister upgrades, some minister trait upgrades. This guy goes got his mistress, so he makes people even happier. So he's plus one happiness to lower and upper classes, which is lovely. Is it this chap? Who was it who got? I can't remember which one it was that got the good updates, to be honest. Still quite happy as it is. I mean, if I'm not going to swap him over, I may as well fire this guy to see if we can get someone better. And we do! Oh, this is the chap with the. Oh no. Don't think so. Um, but yes, we get plus one to town wealth in the home theatre, plus four to diplomatic relations, which is good. It's better than nothing, that's for sure. Sorry guys, I accidentally just clicked off the side of the monitor. Pull onto my other screen. So it minimised the, minimise the screen and cut the recording. Okay, so yeah, Norway's shrinking. To be honest, I might actually knock down... What are we? Constitutional monarchy? They're not pretty... They're pretty balanced. Let's knock down the middle classes. to try to ease the tax burden. Okay, so I think... Things start to look good. Cool, let's hit end turn. Let's see if the Swedes fancy their chances in attacking Norway. Because this is a first part, it will be an hour. No. Why would I give you plug bayonets for military access? Or alliances or anything like that. Worthless. So more forces joining the blockade. So I may have to sally out. Which I'm okay with. Because I don't it's not in my interests to let them to let them um, deplete my troops. I may as well just attack them. We do have plug bayonets, so that's something. Even though Swedish troops are meant to be a bit better in melee than standard troops. We've got the bayonets, which will help offset that to some degree. It may even cause them to be over, not overpowered, but overmatched. That's the word I was looking for. But as of right now, 
everything seems okay, everything seems stable. And we've got canister shot, but I don't think we have any other cannons per se up here. No? Oh, he did steal it. Okay, so you immediately go on to ring bayonets. They have nothing, so he's just going to stay there. Yep, Christian has been besieged. My army in my army in Denmark is growing. Um, don't worry about Warden's factory for now. Still, just keep with the just keep with the uh, the troops. I think. Whoa, that was that was funky. Let's take my garrison. Let's sally out. We've got overwhelming firepower. If they want to use the cavalry, we've got our pikes. I think we'll be. We'll, I think we'll do good. It's a reasonable chunk of the Swedish army because they will get whatever happens. They'll get a garrison in Stockholm, so it's not as though we can just defeat their forces on the field. But it does mean we can do a hell of a lot of damage to them before the garrison's about probably about two thirds, half to two thirds. So mortars are bad, but we may as well use them as we've got them. Garrison line in front of the mortars. A little bit more in front of the mortars. Spread these guys out. Spread these guys out. Pikes to the rear. Not in range. Oh, but lovely, they are coming towards us. So let's allow our mortars to do something. So hopefully, if they smash into this flank, they'll hit the unit of hidden militia, but I want to move my pikes over directly in response to their cavalry. speed up time actually because it's not entirely clear what their plan is going to be. Ideally I'd like them to charge my pikes but I don't know if that'll happen. I'm not going to make my militiamen attach pikes, attach bayonets because these are plug bayonets. It will remove their ability to fire. Oh, we've got our pike uh, into the mix, so they should knock down this unit of horse provincial cav unit very quickly. Although, I do hate that my artillery is probably still... Good, they're shattered. Bring my pikes back. My pikemen still have the ability to fire, which will come into its own because the pikemen are advancing. And these chaps are... These are militia. Okay, speed up time a little bit. We are meant to be attacking, but if they want to attack us, then I'm more than happy to let them do so. So everyone's going to pour fire. Let's probably have a look to my troops. Danish militia looks pretty good. Danish line infantry looks very cool, I think. Um, conscripts will look... Yeah, they look pretty good. Everyone's firing into the pikes. I mean, granted, they're only... They're not very good troops that are shooting at them, but you know what, I'll take them. Every single person they kill is someone they can't bring to bear against me. This militia unit should be defeated by the garrison line and the conscripts. My conscripts got worse range. Oh no, it, it is just because the 
further along. Yeah, the range still the same. For some reason that feels, I know it's further away, but that feels so much bigger just in terms of pure distance. Okay, if these guys are going to come around in this direction. Let's run my infantry around. Good, they're walking right into the crossfire. Could probably dress my troops out to get more muskets into the fight, but I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Okay, they were charging for a second. At least we're still... Because I do have my pikes to throw into the mix. I've got more pikes than they do. These guys want to make an issue out of it, which I don't think they do. Oh no, they are. Well, it looks like they want to, but... Good. Wavering, that's exactly what we want to see. Okay, these guys. Oh, there comes the cavalry. Let's run these guys in. Let's line these guys up to get more muskets into the fight against the line infantry. Then let's have a go. Because right now our guys have pipe. I should have bayonets attached. Yeah, they do. In pure infantry terms, they shouldn't be too bad. These guys follow calm citizenry militia. They might not do great against the infantry, but they will eventually rout. They're actually doing not a bad job against these pikes in combat either. So the key issue here will be finishing the troops off rather than actually killing them because they will be now loose in my territory and they're probably going to do lots of raiding and that's annoying but I'll deal with it throw my pikes on to attack their cavalry these are the units run on into their guerrilla mercenaries hey they listen to my commands for once Yeah, they are winning. Well, they are slowly going to be winning. So they're winning for now. But now my pikemen are in. The general's bodyguard is going to be cut down significantly. So these guerrillas are going to go down fairly quickly too. I want to kill their general at least. To kill their actual general. Then that, that will at the very least get rid of their cavalry unit. The general is... There he is. There he goes. Perfect. So my blob on to attack them. Although that's a solid victory for the garrison forces of Norway. Good. If we had cover I'd chase them down. But it's not worth it without our our garrison forces are getting stronger. They've only got 29 actually. That was a big defeat. Oh, they're dead. Well, this went a lot better than I thought. Okay, let's just where? So let's just reinforce. Actually, should have done it that way. Everyone try and replenish as much as they can. Cool. You're still going to get two units of line. 
then I think we're going to start marching. We're going to join these forces together and drive on to Stockholm. Look at that, 8,000. Copenhagen makes me less than 2,000. It's still shrinking. Stockholm. War weariness. <sighs> Interesting. They've heard bad news from the front. Although well, judging by the fact that it is the Royal Navy, it's not out of the realms of possibility that I take Stockholm and lose uh, Norway. That's absolutely a possibility. So, but if we do, we will attack them and we will beat them. Um, but I have the suspicion that Sweden will fight on. So we'll probably have to take uh, Finland and probably... I don't want to take St. Petersburg, but I will. Um, and I'll probably have to stay on fairly good relations with the Russians because I don't want to have that as a front. But then again, it's attacking a fort. If they want to attack it, go ahead. I will slaughter them by the thousands. Yeah, once I take Stockholm, Sweden's position is significantly worse. I need to hop over to Finland, finish that off. Although, I shouldn't count my eggs before they count my chickens before they've hatched. Has not yet been developed. Because they're probably going to be extremely unhappy when I t when I take them. Let's do research. I mean, I don't want carbines, but why not? Master replenishing. So what sort of garrison do you get? Half garrison, probably with some artillery. Product unit of cavalry would be good, I think. But then we won't have much of a choice. To be honest, I may even just march. Oh, no, I can't march because they've got ships. Okay, so one more turn. Let's hope this navy clears off. Otherwise, to be honest, I might be a bit naked. Or, power move, kick them out with militia. Secure the port for ourselves. It cannot be used by our enemies. And to be honest, it's bring these chaps with them because they may as well combine here then move on to Stockholm so Norway's vulnerable for now but that's not the end of the world yeah like that's just absolutely asking to be delivered to Norway so or Copenhagen to be honest Well, if we go for Copenhagen, then I'll take Stockholm. So I'll kind of... It'll be like fighting the Swedish campaign as Denmark again. <laughs> but at least if we take Stockholm, then we'll be off. Once we, if, As long as we withstand their, their um, rebelliousness, then we'll be off. I'd probably like them to attack me so we can destroy their garrison. I think well, I think Denmark also gets mountain troops as, as a type of skirmish unit. I think that they're, that thing, mountain troops and an expanded regiment of horse are their big perks. Barbary State still being cheeky little scamps. They've not left, but they will leave when I've hunted them out. They'll go do something. Which is all I need. As you guys back them up. Got 1100, which I'll upgrade my conservatorium to get me some more town wealth. Oh, you're starting to shrink. Even though my tax policies got got lower. Oh no, it doesn't even matter, it's population growth. Um, yes, you're probably fine. Lowering nobility, low ability to produce tax burden would probably help. Steel 
your terrestrial carbines again. Good. And turn again. If they did decide to keep their fleet there and not move it, that would be extremely frustrating. An alliance with the Prussians? No, because we want allies with the Russians and you guys will be at war. What well, do know. Of course, there's problems with Poland. I'll do it. Because it means they have to toss a coin between backing up me and Poland. It'll probably be Poland if Russia declares war on Poland. But it's but still. Let's make the AI have to think or compute the odds. Frustratingly, it looks like that Swedish navy has moved. And that's quite an impediment to our crossing to the territory. Yeah, it's still just sat there. It's just a brig. My navy can't break out against their navy. So I want to see, there's no. So these guys have to stay here for the foreseeable future until something happens, I think. Because they can't take on the Swedes. I can't get these guys off the troops. I cut off the beach. I can't bring in more ships because this guy's zone of control. Maybe he doesn't have a zone of control because he's blockading. You can see how this guy's is all red. This guy's is there's just nothing. It's the same colour, although there is a slightly darker shade. Still, let's sail something in there to see if we can move someone out, or maybe even maybe even here. So let's bring something cheap as bait to sail to try and bring these guys to bear. It's just a brig. Let's recruit an honest to god faith and try and actually kill it. <laughs> That's a good option as well, I think. Oh, we got it. Awesome. Even though I don't really need carbines, it doesn't really do anything for us useful. I'll still take it. France is still... well, see, France is still... France is on the move. No, the provinces are still looking for stuff. So I've had to... Oh yeah, I want, I'm definitely going to stop recruiting in Copenhagen while I've got this dilemma of not being able to move my army out, because obviously that's a recipe for me to just choke. But fortunately, it looks like that navy to the south can get to the brig before... without the blockading army... or well, blockading navy causing too much of a problem then I will probably have to spend some money to actually build up a navy and it looks like they've not moved again because we've not seen their turn yeah they're still there so it's two turns to make a fifth so we can't move this turn we're still just getting getting money some money not very much money at some point I'm gonna need a decent navy that's ring bayonet. Go for squares as well. Military syllabus, military syllabus would be nice, but at the same time we can't actually make use of it. 400. Well, I may not be able to, I may not be able to actually escape. Just crew a sloop. See if we can use different avenues to escape. 
It all depends on if we can get this... If we can get this um, sloop to move. Because right now, it's just... It, it's completely, completely blocking our entire plan. One sloop. Yep, I hope the Poles aren't going to try and steal stuff from Sweden, because it's not going to happen. They can't get there. So then their armies move. Damn! So let's hope our fifth can get away. I don't I think he's probably gonna be ambushed by them so I'm tempted to send this sloop down here to try and be intercepted yes my hope is that's diminished their movement points not massively so let's see if this works So their fleet has jumped out to try hit me, so I'm going to auto resolve it. <sighs> okay, this is really frustrating. Because this... Okay, look, what if I move... Oh, I'm just going to do something really weird. No, I can't. Abandon the port. Because right now we're just trying to play with the AI to do something because right now there's and they're going to land and they're going to land and take Norway which is mildly frustrating damn you friendly nations I said, mm, then I'm not going to get okay that's good. How can we make use of that? We're going to get trade for... <gasps> we can get our ships... About, we can get our army out. Because they've left us open. We can... Go and transport our, our army across. Okay, ministers... You're rubbish. Why are you why are you rubbish now? Morally impaired. Well, sorry, Mister. You're out of here. Boop. Yes, you're much better. Okay, let's send our sixth. Take on a sloop. Well, I'm not going to risk it. You all. Embark, disembark, well, embark on the ships. Sail out. Disembark the army. Group up with you. March towards, fin march towards Sweden. So right now, we can't stop these guys. It's just... We just can't balance those demands. Let's get a... Try recruiting of militia to garrison the port. Or actually, might, the sloop might be cheaper. And it can't be interfered with as well. Let's get a Royal Observatory. Good, now we're cooking. Let's see if we can prove grenades. Why not? So it's added a bit of pressure because it's, it's allowed them to get an army on the field. But we can defeat them, push them back, take Stockholm. We'll still be alive. The Brawl Navy, the British, this is more of a frustration than anything. It's not going to cause a lot of problems. And we'll have a lot of our base. We'll have a lot of our base um, technologies down. 
unless we sent them north to take out the British first before moving on Sweden. Because we're on the continent now. They can't stop us. We're not on the continent. We're on the landmass. It might make more sense to go north to attack the British. Because that's... Not that Sweden's... I can't attack Stockholm. I absolutely can. Um, but... Norway earns me a good amount of money, so it still might be worthwhile to reinforce my position in Norway. Maybe get some more artillery, then move on Stockholm. Maybe. I think that's going to be our best option. Because otherwise we're going to be we're going to be potentially laying siege to Stockholm while a British army roams around Sweden Norway, which isn't a good outcome. Let's just bring you up here. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to intercept them before they get to Norway. So we've got our sloop to protect our trade. We've successfully stolen the tech. Good, so instead of doing military syllabus, I want you to go down physiocracy. Let's start to grow up our tax base. Because we've got lots of base military stuff. Like all our guys have bayonets, they can form square. We've got canister shot for our artillery. So what do they have now? Nope, don't have anything yet. You've got 2,000. Don't do anything yet. It's not worth recruiting anything because we're going to lose it. To be honest, I may as well just build two units of line. Not go crazy. Not interfere with anything around here right in the minute because everything seems to be going okay. Okay, four turns to that. So I think next turn. Yep, yeah, fine. Let's see how many kills we get. 300, that's not great. Yep, yeah, Britain's blockaded me, so that's okay. What matters is during that breathing space, we got our army out. So we'll go take back Norway. Then we will... Okay, they're offering us 3.6 grand for this. Now it's worth doing. That's a lot of cash. Oh no. Don't... Oh, phew. I was going to say, don't, don't do it, Ottomans. Don't sail around and attack me. Okay, so they might be marching towards... Okay, they're offering me cash as well. Okay. So the Swedes are marching towards Copenhagen. So the line infantry I was kind of regretting because I couldn't um, grow. I couldn't move them to the continent. No, I'm pretty happy with that because now they've got a nice uh, garrison force. Well, the core of a garrison force at least. have recruited so many units, your treasury is buckling under the weight of their upkeep. Yes, we're starting to lose money. ...would spread the costs, as well as putting the men to good use. Raising taxes will... Don't worry about raising taxes. We're going to get a bunch more taxes. Ooh, the 33rd foot have been annihilated. To be honest, lots of their good units. We're against Highlander warbands, but yeah, the marines have been decimated in the 33rd foot. Good. Let's retake Norway back from the British Stockholm and we're fighting against that Swedish army that's now in the fog of war somewhere. We'd be in real trouble. We'd have no money, an army that needs to be... <laughs> Phew. Wipe brow. So we defended Norway. We lost it with our fight. Now we're taking it back. <laughs> Let's get on with him. Wow, this is a 
This is pretty. Actually, I'm on a bit close to the action, but then again, there's nowhere. Here's not too bad. So let's create great line troops. That's way too many. No, I think I might actually deploy them back up here because then they fire over the heads and I haven't got to worry about I don't have to worry about them as much they won't give us as good close support but I can handle that group all our cover on the left militia into the town pikes spread them out General in the centre. Pound their pikes. Everyone else. Everyone else push up rapidly. My militia are more or less just here to protect... To be honest, not want to do anything. Can't fit anywhere. Let's get out there and get ready to engage the yeomanry with our superior cavalry. We are about to put their artillery forces under threat. Here we're all going to open up on the garrison. So the Highlander Warband are. There they are. Kill the kill the count, kill that, and then pull back. Don't my yeomanry not to have anything to do. Let's move up one pike unit directly behind here to support them in case the Highlanders charge. We're going to get ready to charge. In which case, then, let's put cavalry up on this hill. There we go. So the pikes are getting ready. Gonna get into position, but they're being shot to bits. Building occupied. Okay, I might have to move both my pikes towards the centre because it looks like there might be a bit of a mass charge. Everyone's got socket bayonets. It's a 
bring our cavalry down. Charge with my pikes. Provincial horse, go for the general. Regiment of horse, sprint down and smash straight into this Firelock Arm citizenry. Do not allow this. Hello. Okay, good. For a minute there, I thought that. Let pull my cavalry back. Pull my pikes back. Send my pikes to go also try to kill the general. Because right now we've got a nice little cauldron for them. About to get much more deadly when these troops get into position. So slowly, slightly rotate the angle round on this line infantry. The general dead. Send the send the no, let's keep them actually both here for now. Well my general's not done anything. <laughs> no, conscript, stand your ground. Artillery pick of the 33rd foot. Richard Sharp's regiment when he was in India. It's looking very unhealthy. Artillery. And let's speed up time. Let's get some let's get some blood on my general's boots. That's why it's not about actually killing units, it's just about getting the getting the kills to see if I can get some cool bonuses. This is my first general. It's Denmark, it'd be nice to make him a bit of a of a fighty general. I also forgot to check who it was I was killing. I mean, there's no point trying to actually kill units because it's a, city, it's a city attack you know they're all gonna be they all die it's just about keeping my troops busy god this is a Noah's Ark kill them oh, they're going to escape yep that's the cannons they're going to escape. General's bodyguard go for the Highlanders. To be honest, everyone go for the Highlanders. But I don't think it's going to make a darn bit of difference. Well, it might actually. They're not going to. They're not going to make it. Oh, they're so close. But they can you find them here? There we go. Maybe they can't. This is impassable for infantry. So they've had the very unfortunate duty of running into a, a 
corner that's impossible to retreat from. Okay, let's take manual control of one of them to start to wipe out some of these stragglers. Especially this guy, as he could actually escape. Got him. Good. We've bloodied our army. We've given it some... some experience. Our attack situation's probably not entirely solved. Going to replenish. I see if we can temporarily make peace with Britain. I doubt it. Yeah, that's, that seems about right. Move to the fort. We may have to bump our taxes up, if anything. Still getting some conscripts. Crew another unit of line. Don't want to spend all my money. To be honest, instead of these guys marching towards Copenhagen, they can start marching towards Stockholm from here. Stationed at this fort. Just, I've already checked if I can steal any research, and I cannot. So that's another British army chewed up. So we're going to perpetually be at risk from the British. Um. But as long as we can kind of keep them at arm's length while we focus on Sweden, then we should be in quite a good place. So if we can knock out Sweden, we control the Baltic, we'll have a good relationship with Russia. And we'll have like a safe haven to build up our naval forces. Ooh, they might have realised where I was going. In which case, then, it may make more sense to go south. Regroup with the forces I was just recruiting in the garrison for Copenhagen. Send them east. Continue our war. Because it looks like we have one Swedish army to defeat in the field. First. And then it's on to the capital. But then, that army in the field, if we can break them, that, that, that'll probably be it. There is a port in this region that is not. I know Bergen wants to. Bergen wants to expand. But we're not making any money. To be honest, it's a pretty naff army. So I think we are best served from doing this. March on the road to Sweden. Hit him. Because of fighting Britain, it's tempting to go straight down the military syllabus route. No, I need the cash. I need to start bumping up my economy a little bit. I'm not going to build this, because money is scarce. Local fishery will help. Hmm, but we are shrinking a lot due to my taxes. If I shrink them down, Copenhagen's growing. Good, they're both growing now. Just, okay. Move east. Keep going on with the research. Oh, thief taker. Stall holder. Good. Our ministers are getting better and better. Good stuff. Let's hit end turn. So the Britain is strengthening her blockade. Which is her prerogative, but once I take Sweden, I won't care. Because I've been making Stockholm itself, we'll be bringing in 3,000 a turn. And I'm probably going to have to knock down the school to get them happy with me, build up my happiness buildings a bit, then rebuild the school. So I can get two, two research establishments on the go. Good. Let's see Poland's on the same on the same sheet as I am. 
the Ottomans are moving troops around their empire. Yeah, they are quite steadily recruiting. But we have lots of infantry, so we can overwhelm them with musket fire. May not have fire by rank, but we've got lots of muskets in general. Good, we've got the observatory. March on with the link up See if we can entice them to come at us. Can I upgrade the roads? Yes, I can. No, I have better roads. Actually, that's a bad idea. I need that money. Let's check to see if we can steal any research. Nope, I don't think it's possible to see what they're researching. Or I can actually... No, I don't even have to move them in and out. I can just keep them in there. Okay. Cool. End turn. The hope is... Oh, they're bringing up... They're just recruiting another army. They're going to keep pumping up armies to attack me. Maybe the smart money might be to take Sweden, then immediately spin around and actually try to take out Britain, rather than Sweden itself. That would be an interesting stratagem. But right now it's definitely not worth building up a navy now. The money is needed elsewhere. Ooh, so they've marched around. Okay, so they've left. Question is, do I trade capitals? Yeah, I'll sell carbines to you, Marathi Confederacy. Give me that money. Question is, do I go for the capital? Or do I engage their army? It's got to be engage their army. is it? I think it is. Realistically I can't garrison my other territories quick enough or suitably enough. You have recruited so many units, your treasury is but I do need the money. <laughs> this is a chaff fleet. Okay, let's do this just to keep off our own garrison growing. I mean, if they want to go up and take Norway, I'll trade Norway for Sweden. You know what? Stockholm it is. We're going to attack Stockholm, because Stockholm will start... But it won't earn us lots of money off the bat. We'll need to make them happy. But I think that's the move. Right now we've not got much money. Stockholm gets us money. And then... Then we can deal with the Ottomans. Not the Ottomans. Norway. Um, or they might turn around and attack us in the fort, which would be brilliant. But, looking at the timer, I think that's the end of this part. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this first part one. Well, the first part one. Part one. And, yeah. I think it's. I think it should be squaring out to be quite a fun campaign. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And we'll see you next time.